We are really excited about our Elements Vulcan cladding from Abodo. This thermally modified pine weatherboard is both heat and steam treated, so it becomes more resistant to decay. The final product is much lighter in weight and even has a 20% higher thermal performance. It's totally non-toxic and is sourced locally from FSC certified timber. Before installing the weatherboards, we gave them a good coating of protective oil. Elements Protector is all natural and 100% plant-based. We chose the graphite color, which will silver beautifully as it ages and will match perfectly to our joinery. Good morning. Today we're going to be talking about installation of the weatherboards. Um, let's have a look. Like we've discussed previously with the windows, and we look to the win window manufacturer's recommendations, the rules around installing windows, uh, what the building research people say, and advice from your builder or, and or architect as to how to install them properly. These are critical points for weatherproofing your building. So now we come to the weatherboards, we have to apply the same thinking. So today, I'll tell you a little bit about this particular type of weatherboards, <clears throat> but what I'm saying is that there are many different ways of putting weatherboards on, so it depends on the system that you're using. Weatherboards can be direct fix, that's fixed directly to the building. They can be on a cavity system, that's what we have here, a cavity system. Then you have weatherboards, which can be anything from, or your cladding I should say, which can be a sheet of plywood, um, it can be a horizontal board so, such as we're looking at here, it can be vertical boards, um, this particular type is called shiplap but we can have bevel back, that's the traditional weather, weatherboard lock and each system has its own idiosyncrasies that we need to take into consideration so it's like a little bit of research or asking someone who knows and making sure you're installing it properly. A good example will be when we look at the corner here where in some cases we need to have a flashing. In this particular system we're using, we don't need a flashing because in actual fact, when we bring the weatherboards to the corner, such as you can see here, we put what's called a corner box over, and that's in lieu of the flashing behind. Sometimes these are mitered with a soaker on them, and so on it goes as to the different kinds of methods. So you've got to make sure that you've got the right, you're using the right system. With this kind of weatherboard here, not only are we using a ca cavity system, but it's a concealed fixing system as well. So you can see how the guys have um, screwed the weatherboards here. This is as per the manufacturer's recommendations for this different type of weatherboard that actually fits together a lot like flooring. And then you can see on the back of the house, the concealed fixing system where they lap over each other, lock together, and the fixing, this one isn't fixed yet, is hidden in there. Now of course we've referred to the regulations, how far does the weatherboard go underneath, how far does it have to go up, and a little bit later on we'll talk about flashings and finishing the cavity system and the weatherboards at the top. But for today, this is where the guys are, and, um, and they're fixing, so that in this particular case we've got a, um, we're screw fixing, because we've got a steel frame. So if we go back to the fixings on the weatherboards, so we've, we've got the manufacturer's recommendations, <coughs> which, can, which, which can vary a little bit, because we could either be nailing into a wooden frame, or doing as we're doing here, screwing through the cavity batten and into a steel frame behind. Now, we'll just have a look at how the lads are um, keeping a track on getting the weatherboards done nicely. Now, one way is the use of a story rod. Now, simply, it's a piece of wood that has marks, which is called the amount of cover each particular weatherboard has. Let me show you how it works. In this particular case, we're calling everything, or we're working from parallel. And that's simply because our trailer might be still sitting on a little bit of a curve, so we're not using levels. We're making everything parallel and we're starting from the bottom. <clears throat> so in this particular case, the boys had fixed a block to the chassis and they would sit their story rod on it. And I'll just turn this sideways so you can see it, but each increment corresponds to the bottom of the weatherboard. And if they use this all the way around, 
checking their weatherboards as they go. There's a little bit of adjustment we have in here with these weatherboards that we're allowed. We can make sure that we end up at the right place here because even though we started down here, this we, it's critical where we end up for the type of system that we want to use at the top and that's a full board going straight across the top of the flashings. Now, when you're putting the weatherboards on, if one weatherboard is up or down one millimeter and we have 15 boards, that can be 15 millimeters out by the time we're here. So we have to be able to keep an eye on it. And in this particular case, we're either using measurements or we're using a story rod to make sure that when these boards, so we can adjust them a little bit to keep them on track. That's what a story rod is. Normally, the story rod is kind of an old school thing and the builders in the past would have put it under the suffete, which we don't have here. So we've got a trailer, we're working from the bottom, story rod. Okay, so we'll just have a little bit of a chat about joins. <clears throat> so depending on the stock that you can purchase, depending on the sizes that you actually need, long ones here, shorter ones in here, little ones in here, even smaller ones in here. So what we do is we would go right round the building and make a cutting list, and then we would work out good ways of minimizing our waste. And that might mean that one particular length gives us three of these, or it might give us two of these and one of these. It can get more and more complicated as you get into it. It's a little bit of a brainstorm because it might be one of these, one of those, and one of those on the other side. So you need a list of everything that you need. Here's your stock, how are you gonna divide it up to make the most efficient use of it. Sometimes you will have to make a join. Now a little bit like I was saying, different systems, different weatherboards, a join is also something that you need to research with your particular type of weatherboard. Referring to the manufacturer, or the brand's regulations as to the which way to make an appropriate join. So here, we've got what's called a mitered join. Now, these particular weatherboards won't have a soaker, which is a metal plate that goes over them. Sometimes they're sealed from behind. Sometimes these are actually use a sealant or a glue in here, which can be okay but end grain gluing isn't necessarily the best way to do that. You put a bit of sunshine on a dark wall and it's gonna expand and contract. Um, the use of a sealant, well, it, it might act as a gasket for some time, but if we're looking at 20 or 30 years or more, uh, could be difficult for it to still be performing and we'll never undo it and redo it again. So the idea for us, I believe, is to make as good a job, quality job as we possibly can. A good quality system, and in this particular case, um, uh, the paint system goes with the type of weatherboard we have, <clears throat> but also the use of the cavity. So I'm actually not too worried about a little bit of moisture getting in here. It'll dry out. If it gets through, it can fall down, come out the bottom. Um, so it's not too much of a concern, but look up what the manufacturer says about joining his particular type of weatherboard and do a really good job of it. In our next few videos, the BioBuild team will be covering some of the more detailed aspects of cladding, such as joining cuts, fitting corner boxes, and also fitting head flashings and window seals. We'll see you then.